Hey guys, how's it going today? We're going to be working on a Kubota T1880 and a couple of my video clips just at the beginning of this video got corrupted for some reason. I'm not too sure why. Just to get you caught up here, one of our customers called us and said that his tractor wouldn't start. He said he didn't know what was going on, but he turned the key and nothing happened. So we went down to pick it up and this is what we saw. So his Kubota tractor was sitting under a tree. You guys can see it in behind there. And basically this is a 2014 model that he purchased new in 2015. And when he bought it, he used it for about 10 hours that year and he put it away. Um, then he ended up paying uh, someone to come and cut his grass so he never ended up using this machine much more than the the 10 hours that he initially put on it so uh, this guy came and uh, cut his grass and basically uh, it just sat there guys under this tree and uh, he never come over to uh, turn the key he never fired it up it had the same gas in it for uh, two years and uh, unfortunately the uh, the piston seized inside of the cylinder uh, the starter had a little bit of issues as well engaging and disengaging and it needed some basic stuff like a carburetor clean because of all the fuel that had been sitting there for two years so you guys can see it's got uh, bird poop all over the hood it's covered in mud um, if we look here you guys can see that uh, squirrels were actually nesting underneath the uh, plastic shroud cover that goes over top of the engine and uh, they had acorns just completely filled and uh, the picture here that you guys are seeing now doesn't do it justice there's more later on in the video that you'll see but we filled up about a quarter of one of those uh, outdoor lawn paper bags that you would use to uh, put like uh, tree clippings and stuff like that in it so the squirrels were inside of it and uh, they got all kinds of uh, rotting leaves and soil that was on top of the deck uh, didn't do any damage to the belts but uh, obviously the deck had to come off for cleaning and uh, for blade sharpening and once we got the uh, the hood and the front uh, shroud that's uh, just underneath the hood there off uh, we had to remove some uh, metal paneling uh, that's uh, for noise buffering because it is an 18 horse Kohler uh, they're known to vibrate and uh, they do make quite a bit of noise so they put this uh, shrouding on the bottom of the engine and it acts as a baffle uh, to help keep uh, noise and vibration down there's your model serial number right there the squirrels got all into the uh, muffler and everywhere else underneath there was a bunch of acorns I'll show you that's not even a quarter of what come out of this thing we had uh, one of those brown bags filled but anyways the piston was seized the whole engine was seized you couldn't turn the flywheel uh, pulled the plug you couldn't turn it even with a wrench you know we had to take the uh, the hood and the uh, the shroud off of the front end and uh, we put it up on our mojack which is uh, that guy over there so it was up in the air on the front end and we took uh, ATF which is uh, automatic transmission fluid about uh, three quarters of a liter and we put uh, that into the cylinder put the plug back in and just let it sit in the upright position for about uh, oh two days and uh, we finally got it to the point where the flywheel would turn but only in a very short range you know it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't make a full revolution so that means that the piston couldn't go up and down in the cylinder uh, it was only moving uh, I'd say about a an inch up and an inch down and that was about it so uh, I pulled the spark plug and uh, well before we even uh, put the ATF in I pulled the spark plug and used my uh, USB endoscope you can check that video out I'll put a link in the top right of the screen now but uh, I pulled the spark plug and put the endoscope inside and it was just blacker than hell guys unbelievable how much uh, crud was built up on the cylinder walls but uh, anyways here's the head I just pulled that and uh, I just went in behind there and uh, pressed on the uh, the back of the valve where the spring is and these lifted up so I know that the uh, the valves aren't seized here's the push rods here you can see I got tape on the the one that lets me know that it come off of the the right side of the machine uh, the, technically it's the left but it's the right when I'm looking at it from the front so anyways here's the cylinder I'm not sure if you guys are gonna get a good shot of that but uh, there's your piston and uh, that's our cylinder guys so you can see where the piston was moving up from about that position there to right about there and it was scraping all of this stuff off of the walls of the cylinder what I was hoping to do was bring that piston right there to bottom dead center so it would be as far back in the cylinder as possible 
And then what I was planning on doing was taking a honing tool and going in there and honing it and then, uh, you know, hopefully getting a full revolution out of the engine. Unfortunately, this machine was left to sit for about two years and uh, it never, never started. He never turned it over. So the battery, the battery's also gone, guys. That's shot. So uh, we got to buy a battery. That's going to be like a hundred bucks. Uh, we've already got the labor for, you know, taking all this stuff apart. And we really haven't even touched the engine apart from just disassembly. You're going on the news, buddy. That's Wilson right there from Tool Time. Okay, so after uh, moving the piston around and getting some, uh, some like PB blaster in there and uh, some release all and, and a good amount of lubricant, we're finally at the spot now, guys, where the piston is at bottom dead center. It seizes right about there, but the good thing is that if I rotate this back, you can see it's coming up again. So that means that right about here, the piston's at bottom dead center. So now, what that means is I can get a hone in here, a cylinder hone. I'm gonna have to clean up all of this gunk, which you guys can see. Like, look at this. It is just covered in stuff right now. Like, I don't even know what that is, guys. It's like a, a combination of, of rust and all kinds of different pieces of the cylinder or the piston, maybe, or the, the rings. I'm not too sure, but... Uh, like there, there's just so much stuff here. Now I'm thinking that this could have possibly gotten into the carburetor and then the carburetor brought all this into the cylinder. But like you guys can see, like I'm just pushing this back. I'm not really even scraping the cylinder right now. And that's probably like, that's, that's like a, a, a good half inch of, of stuff that's built up here. I've never seen a cylinder with, with this much stuff in it for, like such a new machine. So that's actually good news. Um, I thought the uh, the whole cylinder was just gonna be completely covered in that black stuff. Cause uh, when I put the endoscope in, you know, in low light conditions, even though it has the LED on there, uh, in low light conditions, uh, a lot of times it's hard to pick up um, the tops of the cylinders, the sides, and and uh, sometimes you, you really only get a, like a, an idea of how things are in the cylinder. So the only real way to uh, see exactly how the cylinder is, is uh, we had to pull the cylinder head. Uh, it didn't take that much time, maybe like a half an hour of labor. Um, I marked everything. Uh, I taped some things on the, uh, the bottom left uh, cylinder head bolt. There was a washer on it. So I just took a little piece of uh, masking tape and uh, marked that so I know when I put it back together uh, which bolt had the washer on it. Uh, just like I showed you guys with the push rods there, go in, put a little piece of tape on it so you know that that's the right side uh, versus the left. Um, this thing's gonna need a carb clean. Uh, it's probably, we're gonna have to take a torch to the muffler because it had all that ATF and, and oil and water and, and all kinds of nasty stuff. And when he starts it, we don't want this thing smoking or catching on fire, God forbid. So anyways, we'll, uh, we'll keep at her and uh, I'll bring you back when uh, when we get some more done to it. Here's your uh, model number for the uh, the actual engine. It's an 18 horse Kohler Courage SV540. Okay, so uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, scrape all this stuff out of the cylinder here, maybe using like a plastic spoon or something just to, uh, just to get most of it out of there. And uh, you can see like, you know, it comes off the cylinder walls pretty easy. Um, I've pulled the gasket off. Uh, before I reassemble this, I'm gonna end up uh, replacing the uh, cylinder head gasket and uh, also the valve cover gasket. And like I mentioned before, uh, right now I'm gonna take the uh, carburetor off and do a carb clean because you guys can see we got uh, ATF all through the carburetor and everything. So uh, we'll have to uh, put that through the ultrasonic cleaner just to get that cleaned up. So I'm gonna do that now. Then I'm gonna clean that cylinder and uh, see if we can get this thing running like it's supposed to. Okay, so because they, uh, they used a really crappy uh, butt connector, I couldn't uh, disconnect the fuel solenoid shutoff valve. Uh, now this was in all, uh, stuck all the way in the down position. Uh, it's supposed to be in the up position when there's zero volts to it. So basically that little plunger there goes up and uh, closes off your main jet so that fuel from your machine can't flood through the cylinder and into the bottom end. And then as soon as you uh, apply 12 volts to this, you turn your key that clicks down and uh, allows fuel to go through your main. So I hit this with a little bit of uh, release all and uh, it's finally come back up. So uh, hopefully this works. Uh, I'm gonna put the key in and hook up my uh, just eliminator, you know, 12 volt uh, battery starter just so I can test it to make sure it goes up and down. 
Um, but I think I might hit this with a little bit more lubricant uh, because uh, I don't want to put this into the ultrasonic cleaner because again, it's an electrical component. Over here on the workbench, you guys can see just how much crap is built up inside of this uh, carburetor here. And uh, your little plunger goes in there, like I said, closes off that main. But uh, yeah, she's pretty nasty. So uh, I got some hot water in the ultrasonic cleaner. I'm gonna pull all this apart. When you lift the float on this thing, uh, it doesn't even pull the uh, needle valve because there's just so much sticky, like almost like sap. You know what I'm saying? Like look at, like that's not ATF. I'm not sure what that is, but old fuel, broken down fuel. Like I said, guys, don't let your machine sit. Okay, so they got a air fuel mixture screw here, and uh, they have little safety nubs on them so that you can only adjust them about, uh, oh, I'd say about three quarters of a turn. So uh, just using my little Dremel here with a little abrasive uh, bit onto it, I've uh, just ground off the uh, nubs so that I can get it past that guy right there so that's normally what it hits and uh, once you grind off these nubs guys here's a little little trick uh, screw it in first and count the revolutions so I got um, four half turns uh, which equals uh, two full revolutions so now that I know uh, when uh, I go to put this back together I screw it all the way in until it's snug and then I back it off four half turns or uh, two full turns but I uh, I wanted to get that out because there's all sorts of nasty stuff on there and also inside of the hole from where that air fuel adjustment screw uh, so when I put this into the ultrasonic cleaner uh, I want to be able to uh, get some flow through there uh, so that you can uh, break up some of the stuff and with this in there guys uh, it won't clean as good so uh, always remove any uh, screws um, basically disassemble your carburetor as much as you can something like uh, this guy up here which is just a throttle stop you don't really need to take out. Got a little bit of soap in there and I'm gonna just drop that right in there. I'll probably have to run this one for a good 20, maybe 25 minutes. So I might do like a 15 minute and then go in there and stir it, shake it up, move some things around and then hit it again. Okay, so I've uh, finished cleaning the carburetor and the ultrasonic cleaner. We got the uh, sediment bowl to float, the uh, air fuel screw and uh, the gasket there. But the carburetor guys, it was so bad that I had to uh, Put it into a jar here with uh, some gasoline and uh, let it sit. You guys can see the uh, head here. I'm just starting to clean up uh, with a, a brass wheel. Starting to clean this up because uh, there's a ring of uh, just nasty sediment that's built up around our head here. So I'm going to let that guy sit. Hopefully dissolve some of the stuff because uh, the, uh, the intake here, right inside of that guy where your fuel goes in, was just caked full of stuff. And uh, I was sticking this little standard screwdriver here and uh, just going in and just scraping it out. Again, I'm trying to get a shot for you guys. You see how all this is like fine, fine, fine powder now? Okay, so I'm going in with a, an abrasive brush. This isn't metal or steel. It's like very, very hard plastic. And I'm just cleaning off the gunk that's uh, inside of here. It's almost like it's a mixture of... Uh, like rust and dirt like this is like fine stuff here guys so that's it all of this stuff here guys like that's that I think it is dirt uh, like I'm not quite sure exactly what it is but clearly this uh, this machine sucked up something but uh, anyways I'm getting this clean and uh, in the real um, hard to access spots I have a brass wire wheel there now it's important to use brass because uh, well it's softer than steel and aluminum now using a little test spot on the uh, cylinder head there uh, I went and just uh, hit it and I was moving quick and it didn't scratch up the uh, the aluminum so I know that I'm safe to uh, to use it on here uh, we're gonna be honing this cylinder anyways uh, we're not gonna be taking off a lot of material uh, but there's uh, like high spots you know there's there's like right here uh, there's a high spot of gunk and uh, if I get in there I can actually scrape it see my fingernails catching right there and you can see like I'm scraping it off so I got to get all of this stuff out of here guys before I hone this cylinder because I don't want the honing blocks 
um, to pick up any of this nasty stuff. I just want to hone the actual cylinder with nothing more than the cylinder and some, uh, some lubricant. I don't want any of this nasty dirt or rust in there. So I'm going to clean this up uh, after I get all of the, uh, the sediments out of here. Uh, again, I'm going to hit this with acetone and a rag, wipe it off so I know that it's 100% bare metal. Um, and then I'll show you how to uh, properly prep your uh, honing tool to hone a cylinder. Okay, so we got good news, guys. I've uh, cleaned up all the junk. We can start to see some cross hatching in there now. But uh, here's the beauty thing. I'm gonna just spin the flywheel with my hand. Check this out. Right about there is where we uh, stopped before. We couldn't get any higher than that. So now, look at, and I got some release all in there just to coat things. But we're finally getting full rotation, guys. Check that out. So again, I'm gonna bring this piston to bottom dead center, which is, you know, here's here's your top dead center. Bottom dead center is when the piston's as far back in the engine cylinder as possible. And then uh, I'm gonna take my honing tool just to clean things up, even things out a bit, and uh, get some proper uh, 30 degree cross hatching in there. Okay, so we got a honing tool right here. This end you would put onto a drill. This end's got uh, little sharpening stones, almost like uh, what you would use to sharpen a knife. Um, these ones, however, are the uh, ultra-fine ones. So this is more for uh, deburnishing, uh, more than uh, honing. But uh, normally you would have three stages of honing, or uh, possibly two. Uh, you would have like a rough cut, and then you would have a fine cut. Now, because this machine is uh, still fairly new, it's only 2014, I'm using the fine and uh, what you're going to want to get uh, preferably is a clean jar and uh, fill it with some uh, 10w30 oil take your honing tool and uh, you guys can see I just got a tie strap around there because these are spring loaded there is a spring in here and it pushes all three of those arms outwards and uh, you want to fill that with oil and you want to submerge this and uh, well I'd let it sit overnight and uh, once you get those nice and oiled then you can go ahead, oil your cylinder, and uh, we'll get to honing. Okay, so with our honing tool about, uh, well, you want to keep it 90 degrees this way and 90 degrees this way. And we're going to want to go at about 250 RPM, uh, super slow. So if you do have a, a setting on your drill, you're going to want to put it in the lowest uh, setting. I have mine on uh, number one, and uh, we do have our lubricant um, inside of the cylinder, but basically, we just want to go in and out nice and slow. Okay, so I got my little light here. I'm not going to be cleaning the piston. However, after a little bit of honing, we do have some cross hatching back into the cylinder. Again, guys, this is a 2014 model, so it's not like we had to remove a lot of material. Just enough to get a little bit of cross hatching back into the cylinder. Uh, make sure everything's true, everything's straight. You guys can see it cleaned it up real nice. So uh, a little before and after. Here's what it looks like before. And uh, here's what it looks like after. So uh, you guys can definitely see the difference. But anyways, guys, as I was saying, the difference now is quite noticeable from the before uh, when uh, most of that stuff, I think, was just uh, rust on the cylinder that built up on the cylinder walls. And then uh, once we put the ATF in there and uh, it freed everything up, uh, you know, it, it busted up a lot of the stuff, but then I had to take the wire wheel to uh, get the, the stuff that was really caked on to the cylinder. Uh, once we got that off, we were able to hone it. And uh, once we honed it, now everything's nice and smooth. Uh, I can spin the uh, flywheel uh, just with uh, one finger now, and the piston goes up and down the cylinder with uh, no scraping, no gouging, no uh, you know bad noises. If it binds up on anything, guys, you know that you have a high spot on your cylinder, and uh, you need to go and hone it a little bit more. But uh, at least now, guys, this thing should run. Um, apart from the carburetor, which is really gummed up, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to clean that or if I'm going to have to do uh, just a carburetor replacement. Okay, so we got uh, all new parts here for the uh, Kohler 18 horse Courage. Uh, we got a bunch of stuff. So here we got the uh, head gasket, and you guys can see that uh, they compress when you uh, you put them on. And uh, we had to get a new one, so we got a brand new head gasket for it. That was like 45 bucks. Uh, some people would say normally uh, maybe you wouldn't use it or you wouldn't really need it, 
But uh, listen, if I'm doing a rebuild job and, uh, you know, our name, Eliminator Performance, our brand is on the line for uh, reliability. You know, if you go to fire it up and, and uh, this thing leaks and you got, uh, you know, a leaking head gasket, compression issues, you know, I don't want to have to deal with that. So brand new, you can't go wrong. Same thing with uh, overhead valve gasket. You guys can see here, this is uh, the old used one. You guys can see that it's uh, been compressed, right? It's pretty clear. Whereas uh, the new one, you guys can see that's how they're supposed to look. Now, I don't like these cork ones, but that's what Kohler uses. And uh, you can't get rubber ones, so we're going to have to uh, use that. As for the carburetor, man, this thing was dirty. You guys saw that I had it uh, sitting in some uh, gasoline trying to soak. And uh, we couldn't get it clean. There was just too much stuff uh, built up inside of it. And uh, it was like hard, hard as a rock. I don't know what it was, but uh, man, it was almost like concrete in there. So we went and picked up some uh, industrial detergent. This is, uh, I guess it's INDO701, multi-purpose cleaner and degreaser. And uh, you use that in the ultrasonic cleaner. And uh, that stuff, guys, completely blasts any stuff once it's in the ultrasonic cleaner. And uh, you get that cavitation, which is the exploding, um, you know, bubbles of, uh, of cleaner. And, uh, yeah, guys, it did a really good job. Uh, this thing's, like, brand new on the inside. You know, we got still a little bit of discoloration on, uh, on that butterfly valve there. But uh, apart from that, guys, you could see we got a carb kit here. And uh, I got everything I need. I got, uh, there's a Welch plug in there. There's a bunch of stuff, new gaskets, all of that. We also got uh, a head uh, kit. I guess it's, uh, here's our part number here. Genuine Kohler stuff. We got all new head bolts. Um, again, that little washer that goes on the bottom left head bolt. We got that too. A um, uh, couple other little hex, little uh, lock washers. You know, they give you two different kinds. They give you a real fat one there. And then they give you a real thin one. And I think that's because this uh, model of tractor has two different engines on it. And uh, basically they just uh, put both in the kit. And I guess it's cheaper for them than making two different kits. So anyways, I'm going to uh, reassemble this carburetor. This is just like a quick video. I'm not going to be, you know, this isn't really a how-to. This is kind of just me documenting the process of of us fixing, uh, you know, a seized, uh, a seized up engine. And, you know, just trying to show you guys... Uh, what to do here and there. But anyways, I'm going to get this uh, carburetor put back together, um, get the uh, head back onto the unit with the new head gasket. Um, and we're going to have to shim the valves, um, put the uh, push rods back in, uh, torque all the all the head bolts in sequence. I got a manual that I downloaded, so I know all the, uh, the torque specs. And then, uh, yeah, guys, get the carburetor back on, get the uh, exhaust back on. We might dump some gas on that and light it on fire because uh, it's got a ton of like oil, ATF, and you know God knows what else in there. But uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll get her fixed up and hopefully this thing will be running by tomorrow. Okay, so we got the uh, fuel solenoid shutoff valve here, uh, but these basically work off of a magnet. So uh, you have your uh, your hot wire, your positive, and then this normally grounds to the carburetor, which grounds to the cylinder head that's here. And on this one, uh, we have uh, a green ground cable that goes from the carburetor to the cylinder head. And um, basically, we just, uh, I put the key to it, I put the illuminator on here, uh, sat on the seat, put the parking brake on, turned the key to the first position, and we should have heard this click and it should have shot down. Uh, normally, that allows you know fuel into your engine so that when you start it, um, well, fuel can go into your, your carburetor. But uh, this thing doesn't want to work. Now, I'm not sure if that's because of this wiring. You guys can see they got like a impromptu butt connector here that's on this thing. But this looks all melted to shit. And it, like it's just I don't even know. Like this is a machine, guys, that's got 10 hours on it. It's a 2014 and it's already got stuff like this going on. So now I'm forced to cut this here right where my thumb is. And then I'm going to cut this maybe back here. So, uh, yeah, I'm not too sure what happened here, but uh, I'm going to have to snip that off and uh, do some uh, some wiring to uh, clean that up. Okay, so I've done a little bit of uh, cleaning up here. We got uh, some clean bare wire here, some clean stripped wire there. And uh, this uh, cable here, it's uh, basically long enough that, uh, you know, the carburetor doesn't sit way over here. It sits uh, right about there coming off of the... Uh, the cylinder head so I didn't have to uh, put on an extra lead 
But uh, what I'm going to do, guys, is uh, take this to the workbench, and uh, we're going to use a 9-volt battery. We're going to put the positive here, and we're going to touch the uh, negative to the casing here, and we're going to see if this guy moves. If it doesn't, then I'm going to have to replace this. And then at least if I do it myself, then I know that it's a solid butt connector with uh, heat shrink tubing, uh, completely waterproof, you know, and, and we'll do it thick enough so that uh, this kind of stays out of the way of the, the hot muffler so that, uh, you know, it doesn't melt again. And again, guys, this machine only has 10 hours on it. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm saying a few hours more and that wire would have been completely, completely exposed. Uh, all the uh, rubber and, and weather stripping would have been melted off of it and if that arced out you know you could have uh, you could have done some electrical damage blown a fuse or you know just caused uh, some problems and man I don't know what Kubota was thinking okay so normally these uh, solenoids they run off of uh, 12 volts uh, 9 volt minimum but uh, they do run off of 12 so I tried hooking our eliminator up uh, again just positive to positive and then this just grounding to the case and uh, this guy's it did not want to move it's really hard to push down but once you get it down it'll eventually come back up under uh, the spring tension but like there's so much crap that's inside of here um, it, you know it, it from sitting like this it must have just soaked down in here and this thing's probably filled with that same you know sticky goo that was uh, inside of the carburetor and uh, yeah guys this thing is uh, pooched so um, we're gonna have to buy another one but uh, I'm gonna move on to uh, getting the uh, cylinder head reinstalled with the uh, new head gasket uh, get the new head bolts in there and uh, finish that up and then uh, I can't uh, hook up the carburetor because uh, on this one the uh, the bottom bolt that holds the uh, sediment ball into place is actually this guy right here so as soon as we get this uh, then I could finish uh, installing the carburetor onto the cylinder head once that's uh, installed. So let me uh, let me get that done, and then uh, we'll bring you back. Uh, well, tomorrow once I get these parts for it. Well, guys, we got the uh, the head installed. So uh, all of our bolts are in, including the one at the bottom left with that uh, that washer on there. Um, I haven't put the push rods in yet. And again, your high point here on your lifter. That goes on your push rod and uh, cold side here intake, hot side exhaust over here. Um, after everything's done and torqued down and everything's good to go, uh, before I put the uh, overhead valve cover on with our new gasket, I will shim these valves and make sure that uh, everything is within spec. But anyways, now comes uh, torque specking. So uh, when I tighten these up, you know we got the uh, new gasket in there as well. Uh, but uh, when you tighten these things up, you got to go through what's called the torque sequence. Uh, which basically means you're staggering it. So if you have three up here and you have three bolts down here, what you want to do is you're going to like tighten this one and then you're going to go down and tighten this one. And then you're going to come up and maybe tighten that one and then tighten this one and then tighten the middle and then tighten the middle on the bottom. Uh, now that what that does is it, it gives you an even torque that pushes your head onto your engine, you know, as evenly as possible. Because what you don't want to do is tighten, let's say, starting with that one and then going all the way over to the right side and then same thing on the bottom going from left to right uh, because what you're doing is actually distorting the metal so think of the head and think of it going on as okay you're tightening here and then you're gonna tighten there and then you're tightening here well now you're you're pushing all of the metal this way so uh, by doing a torque sequence you're evenly distributing that torque so that this cylinder head is uh, um, bolted on and tightened up to the engine as evenly as possible and uh, what I've got here is just a basic uh, manual that I I downloaded right from uh, Kohler.com uh, it's for an SV 470 to SV 620 so this is the 540 and uh, you know you guys can see it's got uh, all your stuff but uh, what we are after is uh, well your general specifications here so you got uh, your oil capacity you guys can see for all of the models and uh, ours is the 540 that uh, takes 1.5 liters or 1.6 uh, quarts and that's American quarts um, so anyways you guys can see that it's got uh, torque specs here so uh, cylinder head we're interested in uh, the fastener the rocker arm pivot studs and uh, the adjustment nut screw because again I have to uh, I have to shim the valves so uh, it looks like for our cylinder head uh, torque in two increments 
I'll get these torqued up. Uh, again, you're going to go 180 inch pounds and then you're going to come back around and go 360 inch pounds. Okay, so I got my uh, Pittsburgh Pro torque wrench here. This is just a 3 8 torque wrench, but it goes up to uh, 80 foot pounds. So this isn't an inch pounds. So uh, 12 inches to a foot. Okay, so uh, to get uh, 180 inch pounds in uh, foot pounds, basically, like I said, 12 inches per foot. So uh, 12 times 15 is 180. So we're going to be setting our uh, torque wrench here to 15 foot pounds, and uh, that'll be our first torque sequence. Okay, so we got uh, our first torque sequence done. Now we're gonna take 360 inch pounds. We're gonna divide 360 by 12 inches per foot, and 360 divided by 12 gives you 30. So we're gonna be setting the torque on our torque wrench here to 30 foot pounds and uh, we're gonna finish off our torque sequence. I might be in the shot a little bit here, guys. Try not to be. But anyways, I'm gonna start up here. And mine's not a click type. Uh, it's just, uh, you'll feel it, you'll feel the arm bend on a pivot as soon as you get it to the right torque spec. So you're taking your torque wrench, see how it bends? It doesn't click this one, it just, uh, just bends just like that. So that's it. Uh, I'm going to go around up here, down there, uh, probably uh, maybe over here, back up here, over here, and then get the middle one. And then that's it guys. We're done. Then what you want to do is uh, go over it once more and just make sure you, uh, you get that click right there. You don't really have to go in sequence when you're checking this. Again, we're just making sure that our torque wrench clicks and that every bolt head bolt is torqued to the proper spec so that we know we won't have any leakage and that's it guys sorry if I'm in the shot a little bit but it's the best I got and then again guys when you're done using your torque wrench make sure that you loosen it off so that you can put it back where it belongs and you don't overstretch that spring that's in there because if you do that your torque wrench is garbage right because you want to make sure that you're torquing to the proper specs and uh, that's it guys pretty simple stuff well that's it for part one guys if you enjoyed the video think about leaving me a thumbs up you can click here to subscribe and once part two is up you can uh, click here and that'll take you right to that video. I post new videos every week, so be sure to come back and uh, check those out. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.